Hello everyone, this is Expose Lamia here, and I'm going to be doing a short battle against the AI in a game called Draconian Wars. Um, the reason I'm doing this though is because there's been a lot of tension on the forums lately about how people don't understand the game mechanics. So hopefully this little battle will uh, show you guys a little bit more about the game mechanics. Uh, so far that I've been playing, these two AIs have been the ones I've been fighting the most, the natives and the ancient ones gathering. These guys are really easy to beat for me. In fact, I've only lost twice to him, so who knows, maybe this will be the third time. But as you can see here, every turn phase, every time you draw a card, you got to produce. Uh, you can produce more every, at the end of your turn if you pull. But we'll get into that as we go. Uh, I do, I think you draw eight cards, I think. Let's see, three, six. Yeah, you draw eight cards to start off with, so does your opponent. And you can play down cards using their resource cost compared to yours. So I'm going to go ahead and throw down these Viper Warriors here and a Shaman with the follow them. And I never ever throw down units unless their total fate exceeds or meets four. That way if any he tries to throw down any, anything here to match me, we'll have combat fate here. And if I wanted to, I could throw down this, which normally I don't go this aggressive on my first turn, but I am. Because now we have a card that has five, which will play really nice with my power and fear. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of Rakyar. I'm actually doing a bit of a construction in my deck right now, and Rakyars aren't going to exist in my deck anymore because I'm swapping them out for Kuath. I have a sort of plan that I can use for him. So, he's the last Rakyar in my deck, and I drew him, so I don't know, it has to be saying something. But our opponent here is stacking up four pro uh, produce. So the next turn he'll have nine, which means he can throw out a lot of stuff to really fight back. Um, I'm sort of ready for him because I have Force of Will on the Shaman Initiate. So, plus my power and feel. So I'm not really scared. I have enough uh, disrupts to fight anything he chooses to throw down here. I'm not going to move. I am going to pull. I'm going to pull uh, Rikyar's Brood and draw all those cards because I need more cards. Now, my deck is called Flyby. And when I was originally designed this deck, I meant it for it to be an air fighting deck, an air combat deck. Yeah. So he kind of... Um, he kind of match me evenly. I can't really play power and fear anymore effectively. So we'll just have to see what combat plays out. Either way, I'm not going to lose anything. He, yeah, he drew a 6, I drew a 1. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose some cards. But, that's really it. <laughs> I'll let combat phase go through. We'll, get, we'll draw our damage. And we'll go ahead and throw out... Let's just start top decking, why not? Throw everything on top of our deck. Oh, power and fear went away. That sucks. But now that that's over with, I'm just going to go ahead and revive him. <laughs> These Shaman Initiates are amazing. Even though he drew a 6 combat fate, which probably would have been a perfect example to explain. He drew a 6 combat fate, meaning, and if I wanted to, which I am, yeah, I'd be a dick. So next turn, he's losing that card as well, and I'm not going to lose anything. As you can see here, Shaman Initiates are, as long as this unit is damaged all at the, at the ground area, all your other units are shielded. Because he drew a 6, that means I had to kill all these units to equal 6 value. But, um, because I killed this Shaman unit, he became grounded. Oops, not him. Him. And are, are shielded. And when a unit becomes shielded, combat damage don't affect them anymore. They're immune to all combat damage, unless you choose specifically to kill that unit, which I didn't. So he's alive, and because I brought him back... If he initiates combat here again, I can just kill this unit again. He'll be alright for a second time, which is amazing. But we're going to go ahead and throw down both these Salamander Lizards just to try to get as much damage here as we can. We're not going to really worry about a Shaman. They're, they're really cheap to play, so I'm not worried about moving them around. And we're just going to go ahead and initiate combat here. Play our power and fear. He won't get to draw combat fate now because he only has three tactics. We do. So that unit's going to die. And he might even take card loss. 12 to 2. Yeah, he's going to take some card loss. Now the way that works real quick is um, we have a total of 12 damage and he has a total of 2 damage. You think you have to draw a lot more, but what you do is you do 12 minus 2. This is 10. And then 10 minus the armor value of the, any damage unit he has on the field. So for this case he has 6. So 10 minus 6 is 4. He had to discard 4 cards. Because any damage unit will body block any remainder damage so it doesn't get to you. So... This unit effectively absorbed six damage from the leftovers. And just for insult, we're gonna, eh, we're not gonna spit on them. I want that card, whatever it is, because we're running low. And we'll 
we'll pull we'll pull one of our shamans. Yeah, these these cards are amazing. I love these cards. Uh, they're very expensive, not really good on the fate value, but on ground combat, these cards more than enough make up for it. It's crazy how good these cards are. So he's he's drawn a lot of cards. It's pretty risky to try to expand when he has enough uh, cards in his hand like that to lay down a sizable force anywhere he wants to. But mm, should we do it? I can throw this guy down over here and move a shaman over here just for support and leave those two. Yeah, let's let's do it. Or we can play down a shaman. Actually, let's play down a shaman. Shall we? No, I'm not worried about it. In this game, patience is actually. Uh, quite a good thing uh, because don't rush into a fight you'll lose and then if you lose a fight you, you know you lost units you lost cards uh, it's just an all-around bad situation you give your opponent the upper hand so in this game patience is actually a virtue if you want to summon most of your ground forces on an area you already control and then on the next turn move for one cost anywhere you want to and uh, contest the zone that way don't just blindly throw like this unit here if he was an air unit. Just blindly throw him in there and expect him to win. Because while he might win, these guys might have a trick up his sleeve or it just it, bad things could happen and you could lose a very valuable unit. Um, but it's extraction phase. We're not going to worry about anything. Summon phase. I don't have any air units in this hand right now, which I kind of threw them all away. But against this deck in particular, air units is... um kind of a hard time to fight against this is all of his units are mostly air um, he has the air superiority in this fight no matter what I do but let's see here we can do five six play introspection draw on a card let's do that actually so we're gonna throw him down throw him down now this is uh, the reason I love this deck so much this deck while well, technocrats can manage their own fate uh, lizard men can manage what card they draw which I found importantly good I want a lizard uh, drainer so I'm going to get a lizard drainer, <laughs> a life drainer, not a lizard drainer. And we're going to pull that and we're going to draw this. So as you can see here, we have a life drainer, which is the one of the cards I specifically ordered. Kind of like Amazon, just straight up give me my stuff. Next day delivery. Which I, I love that actually, the next day delivery from Amazon. Because I had a bit of an issue with Newegg not delivering my uh, equipment. And in fact, refunding the money back to my account. So I was just like, you know what, Amazon, can you get that here by tomorrow? And they were like, hell yeah, we can. <laughs> but I got it. But as you see here, um, we don't really have a power and fear card, so I'm not really too keen on fighting over here. They had combat fate, we wouldn't if I threw him down. So we're just going to extract. And while I do want to throw Kuwath down, I don't want to throw him down all by himself. So what we could do actually is throw him down here. And at a cost seven because he has a little innate ability where it reduces one for every ground unit in that area. So if we throw him down here, he'll cost seven. If we throw him down over here, he'll cost five. So while it would be you know neat to throw him down over here and fight and just you know do anything, but I won't kill anything. Otherwise, I would totally have done that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw. We're not gonna do anything in the extraction phase. We're gonna throw a life drainer down here to really pr uh, put the pressure on when we extract. See, this game is all about sort of um, patience and uh, waiting for your opponent to overextend to try to contest the areas you're contesting. Because right now, this is a very prime example. You do not want your opponent to have one of these tiles. This is costing him three cards a turn on its own. And if you were, like, if, if, he, he, if he threw that down on me, I would want to contest it immediately using my uh, army to move over. And in that period, you could, uh, like, say he's wanted to move his entire army over. During that period, you can throw down a distortion, catch this lizard on its own, and then just, you know, gang up on it next turn. But we're not going to do that. In fact, what we're going to do, actually, is play our last, I think, our last introspection. I think that's our last one. I'm not too sure. And we're going to draw another air unit so that we can um, start building up an air force here and uh, assist Ku out here. Or maybe we can draw another life drainer actually and just start really pumping out the extract. Six cards a turn is nothing to laugh at. Or we can draw another power and fear and contest that easily. But without air superiority or air, air combat fate, I don't want to do it. I'm going to go for a life drainer actually. And I'm just going to really start pumping out the herd on them using card loss. Not going to move anything. We're not going to pull anything. I like my hands the way they are. I'm just going to draw a little extra few cards. All the few cards because I get greedy. <laughs> I get really greedy. Um. Extraction, yeah, that hurts. I lost a distortion and another Kuath. That's my last Kuath. 
but I'm not worried about it because I already have one in my deck and he's unique. Um, what's he gonna do? Summon a Rakyar over there and a Rakyar Brood. I'm actually gonna contest that. I really want to contest that actually. Do I have enough to do it? Let's see, none. I don't think I have enough to contest it this turn, but I can definitely throw it on my own cards here. Or over here, actually. Let's do that. Yeah. Because it costs less to do it over here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to throw it on Rakiar, which is going to cost, let's see, 9 minus 4 is 5. It's going to cost us 5 over here, which will leave us at, what is that, 4 resources? We can throw it on this over here. Contest it. Yeah. That sounds really smart, actually. So let's do that. We're going to contest it now. Oh, no, I thought I had a power. I thought I had a power and fear for some reason. Oh, oh, well. Um, I'll show you another cool trick that you can do in this game. He drew a five. Ouch. Okay. Um, if I wanted to, I can go ahead and uh, kill off him, which I think I will. So, And you might be saying, oh, that's, that's stupid. Why did you kill him? And, um, I'll show you why. After the force phase is done, all the damage is calculated, uh, all the losses is taken, blah, blah, blah. And I just play my force of will, and it's not like I lost anything in the first place. So, we're not gonna move. He's gonna most likely try to reinforce this area over here. Um, which is fine with me, because whatever he does. If he pulls this unit over here first, he's, he messed up. <laughs> But we'll have to see what the AI decides to do. I'm not sure what their preference is on what they move, but with distortion, I can really play um, a lot of a lot of cards here. Because he's just going to straight up summon Kuah here, which is going to be enough to contest me completely. Uh, thank God that costs all of his resources. Though, otherwise, we would have had a fight on our hands. But what we can do now, actually, is um, he's not shielded, and neither is this unit. So, we're not going to extract anything. We're going to um, pump up Kuath. Give Kuath shielded. So now he can't be targeted by combat fate. But this guy still can. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw down a um, life drainer here. Just so we can start pumping uh, three from here. So we're pumping six and all. And if we control this spot, we'll be pumping uh, eight per turn. Which is... <laughs> That that's crazy. Just a few turns of that, and it's over with. And we're gonna initiate combat here, actually. Let's move the screen over so we can see. I don't have any disruptions to play. I drew a four. What are you gonna draw? You drew a two. So we have the combat fate advantage. Either way, one of these units is down on his field. Yeah, that one. And we're just gonna let combat fate play out. And now what we could do, actually, and I think I will, is use my iron claw. Uh, no, we won't because um. Seven is just, <laughs> there's no way you can actually draw a seven fate card. It only goes up to six. So he's actually invincible to any sort of weapon damage. And so is uh, Makua. But we're not worried about that. We'll just let those die. Makua is obviously stronger than his. And this will probably be the point where he starts uh, fairy stuff over here to contest this spot. Um, let's see. He has five cards in his hand. He might have enough for a sizable ground army, but what I could do actually is, um, you know, move these lizards over to here. Maybe with this shaman for support. Uh, maybe these lizards and that shaman. Commit. One second. Sorry about that. Um, my stepdad knocked. Told me he made chicken salad. Yum yum. But we're not worried about moving. We're not going to pull anything. We're, we will draw cards. Maybe we'll get a power and fear, which we didn't. It's uh Extraction phase, yeah, hit me, it don't matter, we'll just draw from the top of our deck. His summoning phase, what are you going to summon? Another rabbit old dragon, and the rabbit old dragon has to eat another card. Sometimes he'll throw that out and eat, eat itself because he's he's terrible like that. <laughs> he's probably going to initiate combat, yeah, he's going to initiate combat over here. I don't know why he did that, because he's not shielded and I am. So, yeah, I oh, was going to kill that, that unit because I got unlucky and didn't draw high enough. So, we're going to take some car loss because I don't feel like killing Kuath. Because next turn, I'll just kill Kuath, uh, kill his Kuath. And he's going to try to move it away, most likely. 
And oh, he's gonna try to move that over here, and I'm just gonna say no. You messed up when you tried to get greedy. And now he's out of resources, he can't move anything else. And I'm just gonna pulverize that Kuath next turn. He's gonna lose his Kuath. We're gonna produce five. And we're gonna extract. So as you can see here, just extracting six cards from him actually it, it really hurts. <laughs> we're not gonna go through any more extraction phase. We could summon this and uh we will. We'll summon that. We'll go through our combat phase over here. Get rid of his Kuath. No disruptions. I drew a six. <laughs> what did you draw? Oh, he don't get to draw anything. Oh, that's a shame. And he actually had a discarded card. Even with Kuath and massive armor, he still had a discarded card, which is fine by me. No more combat fate. No more moving. Um... I'm going to hold on to my cards, actually. I'm not going to draw anything, because I want to use my uh, altar on his extraction phase to make him discard another two cards. So, I'm going to have to discard two cards now. I'll get rid of that and one of these fire cards. I, I love these fire cards, by the way. And these fire cards, you can play so many good tactics with them. Using these fire lizards in particular, he's going to... I think that's a little too late, my friend. He just lost his rabbit old dragon now. <laughs> From trying to get too greedy. Now he could essentially move his dragon back over here. Which uh, would give me another two cards to extract from. But he didn't want to do that. So it's his loss. Oh, I didn't get to... Oh, because I'm contested in the air. Okay. Well, we're going to initiate combat here. I don't see no reason why not to. And we're going to kill his little rabid dragon here. So, sadly, he's not going to draw any cards because I drew a low fate value. And his he's just high attack, high armor. You're, you're not going to make him draw any cards from that. So, and I don't want him to extract from me here. And he has one resource in his hand, so he's not going to be moving around or doing much at all. He don't have any cards in his hand either. So, in fact, what I can do is... I could split my entire army up if I had more cards out here, but really this is the only spot I want to contest, so I'm going to move a lizard over here. And I'm going to move... Let's move two lizards over here. That's plenty. That's plenty to contest that. He ain't going to be able to extract from me there. Um, I could have moved him over here and forced him not to extract from me at all, but I don't know, it's one of those things. I'm still sort of new. In fact, I... Th yeah. Yeah. He's, he's only alive by one card right now. So I think we pretty much have this game in the bag. There's not much he can do to fight back now. In fact, he can't do anything. He can't. He could have ran, I guess, with his lizard. But where was he gonna run to? This is the safest spot for him, and we won. So as you can see here, combat in this game, while it's essential to stop your opponent from drawing high cards against you, it's not necessarily required. You can totally win a game without even fighting. And these are the cards we won might not even get half of them. There's sort of a bug in the game right now, so we got a few. But that was a skirmish. I plan on uh, messing with my deck a little bit further, not by much, so the, the basis of my deck is still going to be the same with uh, only really one powerful flyby card, and that's cards going to just ferry all around contesting slots for me using shielded and really high attack power. Uh, and I'm going to be fighting against all these people with one deck to show you their their strategies and an easy way to beat them, if I even know an easy way to beat them. This guy right here in the middle, he he's a, he's a douchebag. I don't like him. I hate him so much. So much. His, oh, I hate him so much. But that is it for this episode. I hope that that little strategy uh, fight showed you guys a little bit what's going on in the game, an easy way to win. Uh, don't get frustrated. Sometimes the AI pulls off a very intelligent move. Like, I fought against my Shadow one time, and he did some sort of combat technique. I'm still not sure what he did to this day. And it made me draw, like, 20-something cards, and I lost instantly. So don't fret. Uh, this game is still new on the market, and it has a couple bugs on it, a couple uh, pretty bad bugs, but they're, the developers are working on it. They've released, like, two patches in the last four days. It's crazy. These guys are really dedicated to this game, and I'm glad to see it. But thank you for watching this episode. There will be more in the future, and later.